The story begins with a conversation between a brother and sister, where the brother asked his sister if she was his sister or he was alone angrily. Then the sister replied and asked him to calm down, calling him Johan. He further asked, then why she was defending her and did she mean to abandon him, calling her sister. She found it ridiculous and said that she loved him so much and realized that her brother is a Siskin, and worse, a Yandir. He responded and said that he also loved her and hugged her. It was the Neville Kingdom, a monarchy that owns the second most land in the continent, and has a thousand-year history. She further tells that she was a Rosemary von Werfeld and was born as their first princess, and she died in a terrific accident, and when she next awoke, she was somehow a baby. She was reincarnated with memories of past life. She grew up so quickly after that, and realized that that world she was living, it was completely identical to the setting of an autumn game. She played in her past life and it was a super shitty game. It was the same name as the heroine's rival and a melancholic five-year-old found it worst. It was the hidden world where she defeats the demon king to bring peace to the world and so on and those kinds of stories. A female high school student is summoned to another world and all the captured targets had a hidden face and they all had terrible personalities. It was an autumn game but they were either super masochistic or gay or necrophiliacs and she was confused for whom she was supposed to fall. She talked about a sub-character, a kind gentleman, who was cool and sharp and the first raid in looks but otherwise. Hopeless capture targets were surrounded by and she introduced another sub-character who was passionate and hard-working, etc. And there were another sub-characters who were handsome and had incredibly nice personalities. But the biggest reason that it was known as the shitty game was one of the capture targets. The younger brother, Johan, had a bad case of Siskin. Among them, the one who boasted the highest popularity over the rest of the capture targets and who was also her most beloved, was the commander of the knights, Kano. Maybe, if she continued, then his route will be unlocked and then she will be able to romance command. Kano and then she found a hidden route after testing some functions on the screen and then the screen shows the completion rate is 100%. There was no hidden route and she was so disappointed from the developers and said that at least, let her romance the sub-characters. The emptiness she felt then, was severe that she had played a shitty game to full completion. By the way, her favorite ending was the normal one as it was because the commander Kano was in it. In despair, Kano, the commander said to her that the heroine returns to her world and she was sorry that she could not protect his world. Commander replied and said that it was not her fault by tapping to her head and asked her to be happy over there. She was in love and she found the commander very handsome. Her excitement went up a little and in any case, that was the real world and thought that if she polished herself then one day the commander's flag might rise but in order to live peacefully in that world. There was a mountain of flags that she have to break at the same time and further thought that, for a future where she can meet her beloved commander of the knights, she will do her best. Then she goes to her brother Chris and told him that she had a request. Her older brother was the child of father's first wife and Johan and her were from father's second wife and he was the first prince named as Christoph von Werfeld. Chris asked her that what was the request, calling her Rose. Her mother told her to stay away from him but she found him kind and smart. He said to her that it was the turning point and asked her to be strong. She said that she wanted a strict and intelligent tutor to be assigned to Johan. The situation was dire as father spent all of his time on government matters and ignored his family and he had no expectations for Johan and all of the tutors that came would just spoiled him and even the maids watched him from afar like they were afraid to anger him and the mother limits his movements and so he has lived in a small word and within all that she was the only one who faced him head on and it was no wonder that he became dependent on her and she further said that he was a cute brother that followed her wherever she went but recently he has been a little strange and told him that he once attacked a maid who had helped her by saying saying that to do not touch his sister. She thought that, for her own mental health, she had to break Johan's flag first and said that what that boy needs was someone close, that he can respect and if she was the only one who scolds him, then his world will remain the same and for the sake of their relationship. If he will allow it, then he can one day be your supporter. Chris agreed and said that, indeed, Johan was too dependent on her and every time. He meets his younger brother then he glares at him with murderous eyes. She was sorry about that and asked him that if he could provide Johan with a strict education and then Johan will become a proper person like his older brother. He thought that it was too early but being too brilliant was an issue too. And then she asked if he did say something and then he replied and said he did not say something and she was doing well and said that no matter how capable anyone is, there are things that she cannot do alone and that is why she came to him. Her big brother and his pure smile was blinding. Then the tutors, who were neglectful of their duties were dismissed and instead, a brilliant but strict tutor replaced them and she prayed that to please don't let him grow into a delinquent. 
Assuming that, this take care of Johan, it was the time to break the next flag. She thought about the heir of a marquee family, Jorg Zuigel. He, too, was one of the capture targets of the Hidden World game, but he was a narcissist. He was the first one she captured, but the screen appears with explanation as the fighting was because he was just too beautiful while playing the game, and she was so annoyed after reading that, and she ended the game. Again, the window appeared with explanation is so beautiful, the reflection of himself that he saw in her eyes. She thought if the writer of that was an idiot. The biggest issue there was that, that moronic child was going to be her fiancé. She further thought that why must she dedicate the rest of her life to that narcissist, who says no one in that world is more beautiful than him. She further thought if it was a joke, she would like to pass him on to the heroine as she could not. Her good conscience won't allow her to. She had to at least make him a little more decent first. Jorg from Hidden World had a tragic past. Her beautiful mother died when he was eight. The loss of his wife caused his father to live a neglectful life. It was all George's uncle who could do to help his father, and so there was no one to comfort the grieving Jorg. He locked himself in his mother's room and continued to pursue the shadow of his mother. Then one day he found her in the mirror and understood that she was his mother. It was so heavy for Rose. Today was her first meeting with Jorg, and she thought that for her future she could not fail. Then, she went to the past when she met Jorg, and her mother introduced her as her son Jorg. She replied by saying that it was nice to meet her and introduced herself as Rosemary. In spite of being Jorg, he was so cute, and she was amazed to think that, that lovely angel will be a narcissist in the future. The tragedy that was about to happen. Or in other words if she prevents his mother's death then he will have no reason to become a narcissist so she decided that she will destroy it no matter what. It was the George house when the George mother, Lady Emma was resting. And then she saw Princess Marie. And then Marie said hello to Lady Emma and asked how she was feeling. She was George's mother and was fated to die in two years of time. Lady Emma replied and said that she was not feeling very well that morning but seeing her face had cheered her up. She replied by saying that she loved her. Since the first time, she greeted George. She has left him alone and had barely spoken to him. More importantly, she has to do something about Lady Emma's death or George will turn into a narcissist. She has been watching Lady Emma those past few days and she was not exactly severely ill but there were a few things that were bothering her. Point one was that she did not have much of an appetite as she says. She only needs a little fruit as she is already full every time. Point two was that she does not exercise, she was in bed all day. Point number three was, she does not get any sun as she doesn't go outside, thinking of the windy weather. It was no wonder, her health was poor, even a worsening cold might lead to death. In that case, if Lady Emma could regain her strength, they could avoid her death then she met Lord Julius. He was Jorg's uncle. She asked him that she thought he might know as he run a trading company. Lord Julius thought and asked if she was talking about foreign condiments and further asked why she was asking that. She replied and said that she was trying to think of a healthy dish that Lady Emma would eat and she might be able to use one of the recipes she learnt in her past life. He replied and said that it was very well and he will cooperate with her. She asked further if he would like to take a look then and he agreed after that. She enlisted the cooks and strove to create healthy recipes. Lady Emma found it delicious and she ate all the food. She was very happy to see that she ate all of it and asked to continue to think of more recipes. Then... Jorg arrived and asked if there was something that he can do for help. She replied and said that they don't have to be long but she wanted him to try, and she had an important job for him. It was to take Lady Emma out on walks every day if possible, and he agreed and asked when the season changed if they shall go over there with the mother. After that, she started to talk with George more recently, she displayed her knowledge of books. He found it amazing and said that she knew everything. George was actually older than Marie but it was like she had another younger brother, and she kind of liked it. Lady Emma's complexion has improved, and she barely stays in bed now. She still couldn't breathe too easily but she was sure. It'll be fine then one day, Lady Emma asked something to Marie that when is she going to come and marry into their family. She was so surprised to listen that it was bad. She thought about the breaking of the fiancé's flag. She forgot about as she was so caught up with breaking Lady Emma's death flag. Someone arrived and said that it was much too early for that, calling Lady Emma, as his sister and Marie also agreed. Lady Emma replied and said that her husband and her discuss it often. They were looking forward to the day they will have a pretty daughter-in-law. Her husband is going to rediscipline George so that George will be a man that suits her and he was very excited about it and things were moving a lot faster then. Marie was so amazed and thought that what should she do as she had no intention of marrying their son at all but she could not say that then Lady Emma said that he was right. 
She seemed to have embarrassed her and she was sorry then she finally said that there was someone that she admired, the commander of the knights. She was surprised and then asked if there was someone then what is he like. Marie replied and said that he was a wonderful person. Lady Emma smiled and said that she will support her. Marie was so happy that she broke the flag somehow. Then she was going from there. Then Johan arrived and tightly hugged her, calling her sister many times, and said that he wanted to see her. She screamed and said that her internal organs will come out and asked what he was doing. Then her older brother Chris arrived and said that he has not finished his training and asked him to return. She was so amazed and asked Johan to apologize to his brother and said that Chris was very busy. Still, he has set aside time to oversee his training, and yet he abandoned him. She was so sorry, but she has decided to harden her heart, she thought in her mind. Johan replied and said sorry. She interrupted and said that she could not hear him and asked him to say it again, and he said sorry again loudly. She applauded him and said that that was a good boy. Then she saw someone standing behind Chris and thought that why was he standing behind her brother. Then Chris asked what was it. Johan replied and said that he was his swordsmanship instructor and a knight from the Imperial Guards. Then the man sat down on his knees, holding the hand of Rose, and kissed her hand and introduced himself as he was Leonhard von Orsine of the Imperial Knights and further said that being able to bask in the glory of witnessing her countenance was an honor that he was not worthy of. She thought that the future commander whom she had wanted to meet for so long that she had decided that she would polish herself into a woman that could draw his attention. And yet his first sight of her was a scene where she scolded her younger brother like a demon, and she found it worst. Leonhard asked Rose if there was something wrong calling her with the name as your royal highness. She replied and said that it was nothing, and she was terribly sorry that he had to witness something so unsightly. He asked if she means that scene with her younger brother and said that he was marveling at what an exceptional princess she was, then she blushed and thought that what she should do with her face. Then Johan asked her why she looked so red, but she was not able to answer. Then Chris asked Johan to stop bullying Rose and said that throwing a tantrum there and keeping Rose locked up would be futile and surely he would understand that now, and he agreed. Then he further asked to return to his training as there was still a lot for him to learn. She was amazed, thinking about the lock her up thing, which Chris said. Johan said to Leonhard that he looks forward to his continued the lesson in swordsmanship. Leonhard said that he was sorry for disturbing Rose. Rose replied and said that it was nothing like that and wish him good luck with the training. She further thought that she wonders if Johan hates her now as he seemed quite restless. Then in the way to return, Chris asked Leonhard if his younger brother and sister are not adorable, and he agreed. Chris also said that Johan had finally taken the first step and he enjoyed seeing his progress. Then he further said that it was going to be a great hassle when it's time for her to marry and that still won't be for a while. Leonhard disagreed and said that after all, her royal highness was a very charming person and then he replied and said that he won't have her. She returned and she thought about her meeting with the commander, which was a failure but she was happy to have met him then she thought about Johan and George. Two flags that were related to her have been broken and perhaps she can leave the rest to the heroine now the other capture targets won't come to the castle for a few years so she can take time off from breaking flags. Until then, she will concentrate her efforts into bettering herself so she can capture the commander of the knights and she found it good. There was a time when she had such thoughts about one of the capture targets that was Imperial Knight Klaus von Belmer. She went to the time when she met Klaus and he was looking at her and their eyes were locked. In regards to him, not making any moves was an important condition of breaking the flag. She thought if she did something, it was the hidden world in the game. Rosemary fell in love with Klaus of the Imperial Knights. She did not tell anyone about her love and allowed her feelings to secretly grow but one day, when she was 13, she slapped him and asked if he really think that he could survive without her and who else but she could offer him that pain but he felt sparkled after having a slap and then she realized that Klaus was a masochist. What was more even impressive was that after troubling over this, Rose believed that she could use violence to make Klaus hers and then she said to Klaus that he really was a dirty dog and there was silence all around and further asked that if he means master calling him a little dog. He replied and said that he'll say it again but she was really something and with this Rose and Klaus were united by the twisted bond of a master and servant. He was already a masochist when they met so she could not break the flag and so she wanted to maintain an indifferent relationship so that twisted master and servant flag does not get raised. Few days ago, when Klaus was staring at her and she thought if somehow the flag has been planted, she asked him if there was something on her face and he denied then she further said then he should pay attention to his surroundings and not just at her as she do not think. He can protect someone while looking only at them and she told him not to look at her in a roundabout way and he agreed. 
She was amazed to think that why does he seem so pleased and if scolding just now, count as a treat. She was very amazed to think that who would look so pleased after being scolded by a little girl, and what she was supposed to do if she could not hit him or scold him then she further thought if she should praise him or pat him or will he improve with praise but she does not let it show then she said that she was going to the library, and she ran. She thought that he was a guard so it was normal for him to come along but she did not even care anymore then she saw Johan there, fighting. She thought that he was such a spoiled crybaby but then his expressions were so gallant, though, it does make her a little sad that she could not help him anymore. Klaus warmly looked at her. She thought what was with that lukewarm stare and asked what was it. He replied and said that she was very kind. She asked what did he mean and that was sudden. He replied and said that he served her for a year and eighteen days. She was surprised to know that he knew such detail and then he added four and a half hours, which is hardly enough time. She was again confused that he knew such details and found it scary and then he said that she was a prospective person who cares about others and have a beautiful heart. Those were the things that he knew very well and it was only because she cared that she scolded Prince Johan and to someone with his preferences. A girl who harshly scolds her younger brother in public was in fact an angel and she shivered and found it horrifying. He further added that she was so awe-inspiring and beautiful. She said, that was quiet enough. He replied and said that, she was a master that he truly desires. She was so angry and thought that for him, the word master was a binding promise of subordination to her, and thought about the master-slave relationship and it was over once he called her master and then she replied and said that she was not his master and that would be her father and one word can cause unnecessary discord and asked him to avoid any declarations that will cause suspicions of duplicity but her real feelings was that how dare he to call her master. He could not say anything and she thought that it was good that somehow she managed to convince him and she never wanted to do something so heart-pounding ever again. Two years later, she was on the terrace and it looked like it was going to rain then someone arrived and said that she had a visitor. She asked who was it as there have not been any scheduled visits then a person arrived who was Johan and said that it was him calling her sister and said that he had something important to tell her. Johan thought about the time when the lightning was scary to him, and then his sister came and asked him to not worry as it won't be scary if they sleep together. Then he comes to the present when he came to meet his sister. They rarely even see each other those days. She saw him and thought he was so tall now and where did her cute brother go, and he seems to have grown quite handsome. Then Johan asked Klaus to leave them for a moment as he wanted to be alone with his sister for a short while. Klaus replied and said that with all due respect, he was Princess Rosemary's bodyguard. His duty does not permit him to leave her sight. Then she requested Klaus to do that. Then she supposed that he was not bothered by lightning anymore. Johan said that it was a special day when there was lightning because he can sleep with her. She asked if what does that mean and said that she believed and never doubted that as long as she did not let go of his hand, she would always be by his side. She was foolish enough to think that everything would be as she wanted. But in fact, she was powerless as she could not even make a single guard move out of her way. Johan asked Klaus that he should apologize for that and said that he wants to be someone who can support their brother as well as the kingdom. After listening to this, she thought he was grown so much while he was away. And then he continued and said that as the first step, he has decided to study abroad in the neighboring country of Vinto, and he intends to stay there until he can even be a little useful to his brother. She was surprised and thought that it was her who wished that he would stand on his own feet but now that the time has come, she could only worry what was wrong with her and said that to do not do too much on his own and to do not push himself too hard. Johan replied and said that he will be fine. Then she wished him good luck and said that she'll be here waiting for his safe return. Then his brother arrived there and asked if Rose cried and said perhaps. He should stay close by for today and further asked that if he told her. Johan replied and said that she was not so weak a person. And Chris agreed and said it was true and thought that he was being too protective. And then asked Leonhard to do not laugh and he apologized. Johan further said that the man who snatched her attention away. He hits him more than anyone else in the world and said that he was better in every way, strength, generosity, appearance, and popularity. He exceeds him in every category. Chris replied and said that it must be hard for him to part from Rose. He replied and said that it was so difficult that he could die, but it was a decision that he have made and he will not falter. He will become a man who can support the Neville kingdom in a way that only he could. And he did not know if that pain will one day become his strength and said that he swears that he will return with the strength to protect her. Chris replied and said that he has grown so much and it was a joy for him to watch them grow. Johan replied and said that he sounds like an old man. Chris responded and said that he was aware of how withered he was and he did not need to tell him that and asked him to go. 
He replied and said that he was not as weak a child as he and her sister thinks. He was, in fact, not really afraid of lightning and thanked his brother for guarding him that day in Klaus's place. Leonhard said that it was a perk of his occupation to be able to escort such a beautiful princess. Klaus found it so smug. Rose interrupted and said that he was handsome as she was sure that Klaus was quite jealous. Klaus had to return home for his brother's wedding. But he asked her what will she do if something happens while he was away. But she replied and said that it was fine and asked him to go already. And she further thought that it was going to be a hassle when he returns. Leonhard asked Rose if it could be that Klaus was troubling her. She replied and said that he does tend to get a little too close. And she feels that he was overprotective. He replied and said that now that he thinks of it. Klaus does seem more lively when he speaks of her after recalling the talks of Klaus about Princess Rosemary. She was so surprised to hear that he talks about her and to Leonhard. Of all people, he further said that he happily said that she was a smart and wonderful person. She screamed and asked if he was kidding her and thought that how dare the Klaus to talk about her. And then Leonhard further said that Klaus may be to blame for her feeling so constrained. However, there was one thing that he hoped she can consider was that Klaus was overprotective because she was important to him. Rose thought that he was trying to placate her, and Leonhard was on Klaus' side then and said that she did not want to be a princess who is only protected, and she knew that she was weak, but she did not want that. He denied and said that she was not weak and she was able to stand on her own feet, think, and make decisions and he see her as a dignified princess, and there are limits as to what a single person can accomplish. However, there are times when that can be dangerous and also asked if she could please rely on those around her if only just a little. But she said that the things that are events of the future who could she possibly explain them to and it was so easy to say that. One day, she was sitting and playing chess and then someone came and said that the sorcerer will be there soon. She was surprised to hear about the sorceress and asked who was it and then someone appeared and told her that to be precise. He was still an apprentice but it has been decided that he is to come and study under her teacher Madame Altman and she will have plenty of opportunities to meet him and so she should be nice. She was still thinking about if it was that sorcerer which was one of the capture targets, and he was a necrophiliac. Rose was at the garden. Then someone came and called her princess, and it was Theo who asked her what that medicinal herb was used for. She replied and said that it was used to stop bleeding, decocting, and drinking it also helps to regulate the intestines. It is called mugwort. He found the princess so smart and said that he wanted to learn so much more from her. Theo Eilenberg was an apprentice sorcerer who had recently come to the castle. He was only a sub-character in the game, but he was unpretentious and easy to talk to. Rose thought that, though his childishness almost seemed like a calculated move, and then Theo called Lutz and asked him to come over there so they could both learn. But he did not listen. There was one another apprentice, Lutz Eilenberg. He had the same name as Theo but they were not related by blood. He was an uncommon genius who could freely manipulate ice. There was an unusually high number of bad roots with him, one wrong decision and it was checkmate. In the bad ending, Lutz was convinced that the heroine had betrayed him, so he killed her and sealed her body in ice, hence said to her that she was the most precious to him when she was silent. It was traumatic that he rejected everything about the heroine's personality, and his smile was scary. Rose thought that. That being said, he would have no effect at all on her future, and she honestly didn't want to get involved with him at all. But people might die if she left him alone, and she would regret it if someone dies because she ignored him. She decided that she had to break the flag somehow and asked Lutz if she may come over there, but he did not answer, and she thought that she had no way of becoming friends with him. And then Klaus arrived and said that what was an insolent attitude to have towards Princess Rosemary. He could not overlook that. Rose said that it was fine and asked him to stop that, and he agreed, and then thought that what was going on with that man's own off switch. Theo said that she was quite unusual and asks if she does not think that her knight's reaction was only natural, and it was common sense that one would be punished for such insolence towards the royal highness and normally. They would not even be allowed to come near her and he found it unusual and said that she had acted kindly towards them even though they were merely orphans. She replied and said that he was being tricked, and then Lutz screamed and said that she was just trying to tame them and it was obvious that she was only being friendly on the surface while in her heart. She reveals as the monsters and asks her to do not push herself too hard and she was actually afraid of them. Lutz wears some magic surprising choker. They were heretics in that world where magic had faded. There was the danger of rising emotions that would cause an accidental discharge of magic due to their inexperience. They could not control their power. Then Rose replied and said that yes, she would be lying if she says that she was not afraid inside. She was scared, but she also wanted to know more about him. They were feared by others for having immense power. They could become targets for elimination. 
Rose thought that perhaps Lutz was just honest and straight thinking and pure, and that is why he desperately bears his fangs so he could not be hurt. He screamed and said that he did not want her pity. He was starting to resemble a strict cat who won't be tamed then Theo said to Rose that one of his kind has insulted her and asked to please forgive them. Rose replied and said that it was fine and there was no one there but them, and then he thanked her, and then she asked if he would stop being so formal, and then he understood that said that it was true that she pities both of them. Theo was so amazed and said that she was so blunt or should he say pure. Rose replied and said that she just thought that the two of them were smart enough to realize even she hide it. Theo replied and said that it was her honesty that was most comforting to him and Lutz can be hard to deal with but he thinks that he will let his guard down. Given more time then Rose asked Theo if he will also let his guard down a little and then he replied and said that he will cooperate with her and requested her to do her best. One night, Theo asked Lutz if she was an odd princess. Then Lutz replied and said that if he did not fall asleep and asked him to shut up. Then Theo further said that he did not think there would be anyone decent among the royals, but there was something he liked about that princess. Then Lutz replied and said that he sees that she has won him over already. Theo replied and said that even she did approach them for that reason. He doubts if she means them any harm. Then Lutz angrily asked why. Then he replied and said that he and him were both sensitive to the malice of others. Those with magic are neglected and feared. They have no place to go, even if occasional words of kindness are thrown their way. Most of them are quoted in lies. There are no lies in the words of the princess, Theo said, and it was true that she feared and pitied them. She said that she wanted to know about them. Theo asked Lutz if he do not think they should meet her halfway. Lutz replied that he was surprised that she said that. Then Theo told Lutz that the princess was going to make something for them as a gift, and he was amazed to hear about the gift. Then Theo replied and said that he thought it will be sweets. Lutz was very surprised to listen about the sweets and said that she was probably being misleading by saying she will make it. Further said that it will be made by her cooks and her highness was merely giving the order. Then Theo replied and said that he was just quibbling. Then Lutz replied and said that if she wants to become friends with them, then she should put in that much effort at least. Then he replied and said that daughters of nobles don't even cook, so why would the princess of a great country do it? And he knows that very well. He further said that he was really something. The imitation white bean paste was complete. Since she had no red beans, she tried using those other ones that resembled navy beans, and they turned out looking surprisingly delicious. As a method of getting closer to Lutz, she decided to lure him in with some food. He was cautious at first, but he was surprised when she said that she made it. And now, he gladly ate it. He especially liked the steamed mugwort bread. He seemed to like Japanese snacks, so she tried making some sweet bean paste. But what should she do as there was no machai rice, so she could not make defuku or narakiri. She had no choice but to make doriaki that time. Then Klaus arrived and gave something to her as it was what she requested. The 15-year-old Hilda Kremer was a distant relative of Baron Beckham's wife, the woman who becomes the reason for Lutz's mental illness. She was from a wealthy merchant family. Her family was made up of grandfather, father, mother, older brother, and older sister. Rose believed that it was Hilda Kremer. There was a young servant girl who looked after Lutz after he had just arrived in the place. Lutz began to slowly have feelings for her. However, the peaceful days did not last as Lutz's had great magical power. He eventually caught the eye of a warmongering foreign king. The king had people infiltrate the Neville Palace, and Lutz and the servant girl were abducted. As the servant girl was being held as a hostage, he could not escape and was forced to obey the will of the king. He moved through the battlefield as a weapon of war, killing many enemies. When he was finally allowed to visit the girl, he discovered it was, in fact, the girl who had guided the intruders in the castle. On top of that betrayal, Lutz was ridiculed for being a monster and so he transformed her into an ice statue, no longer capable of speech. After that, the king was assassinated, and the kingdom fell. Lutz managed to escape, and the king of Neville offered him protection and the position of court sorcerer. And currently, the one maid who is actively making contact with Lutz was that Hilda Kremer. She was clearly the girl in question, she thought. In the game, she had no name or portrait, but Lutz really had not shown an interest in her. According to the game, she was supposed to be his first love. Baron Beckham did not seem like the type to stick his head into such affairs. Rose also did not know Hilda's motive for manipulating Lutz. Then Klaus arrived and said that he could be of more use to her if she would just give him the order. He usually acted as an obedient dog, but his true nature was that of a severe wolf. It was as if he was telling her to become the kind of strong person who could use him. She said that she was fine and thanked Klaus. All she was doing was playfully twisting him around her finger. She did not have the resolve to accept that level of loyalty from him, and she was sorry for that. 
then she asked about it to Theo, and he asked if she was asking that seriously. Then Rose replied and said that if it was really that shocking and if he was serious, judging by that reaction and asked why doesn't Lutz have any interest in that girl, and that was the serious reaction she got. Rose further asked if he do not think how pretty the girl was and was desperately trying to talk to him, and he would think that any healthy boy would fall for her, and further asked if he does not want someone to understand him. Then Lutz arrived there, and Theo said what a coincidence it was and asked if it was not there a servant girl who was recently talking to him a lot. Theo added that Rose apparently thinks that it was odd of him to reject her. It was according to the princess, but he suddenly seemed indifferent. Lutz was surprised and asked if he was stupid, and he screamed to pardon him, and even he had the right to choose. Theo agreed and said that he was right and they had been starving without food for so long. Until now, they may have bitten into any food that was in front of them. Theo added that for now, that they have been satiated by the most exquisite food, and he was not such a fool as to reach out and eat poisoned and rotten flesh. Rose was very confused about what he was talking about. He earlier said that the food was good. He added that it was so fluffy and moist and it was quite sweet but not overbreading and that was just too delicious. Rose confirmed if he did like it that much, but she actually wanted to hear about Hilda. He swallowed the food, and he was at a loss for words. Rose wished that if she could make cold sweets too but without an ice house, then Rose asked Lutz that why don't they make frozen sweets with his magic. He was surprised to listen to frozen sweets. She added that it was right, he can make them with cream eggs and sugar. She founded the plan wonderful, to think that, there was a refrigerator in front of her all along. It will be good magic training for Lutz, and she could have her ice cream and thought that, what flavor should she choose, strawberry and coffee but she thought, vanilla was still the best. Theo confirmed that if she meant to turn him into an ice house substitute, and she denied and asked if he was angry and said sorry to him. Theo said that if Lutz was an ice house, he guessed he must be the cooking stove, and thought that there was also an oven nearby as well. Rose laughed at it and called Lutz an ice house and that was a good one to use the miraculous sorcerer as an ice house and to think that, she claimed to be afraid of them a few weeks ago. Rose replied and said that he has no sense of danger. Then he added that, that might be, but he asked if it was really that funny. Rose replied and said that he was mean then Theo said sorry to the princess, and Lutz asked to the prince to not be angry, and it was because of her, she was like this, that they have full stomachs, by petting on her head. Theo said that but still there must be something to that servant girl. He found her suspicious, so he tried following her and he saw her fighting with a man in the shadows and it seemed like she was desperate clinging to him as he pushed her aside. Perhaps, the reason that Hilda aided the kidnappers was not money or fame, but the mere hope of being liked by the man she had feelings for. Perhaps, Hilda was seduced by that man. Thinking of it like that, they must have been captured together in the game because she was betrayed by the man who knew that. Lutz would obey if she was taken as a hostage. She found out that she had been abandoned and so she rejected Lutz. Rose further thought that the man she was secretly meeting with may be the culprit of the abduction. Though, that was all just speculation as Rosemary was ten years old, and her hobby was fantasizing. She further thought that first, she have to find out who he was and she have to do everything that she possibly could. Leonhard told Rose about the man with the features as bright long hair, slender build, and left-handed. Then she agreed and confirmed if he knew him. She said that, according to Theo's eyewitness account, it seemed like he was part of the Imperial Knights, and he also believed that, and asked about the boy that why she was searching for him. She, firstly, thought that in her mind that she did not even have proof so she could not say that he may be a felon. And then she said that he tends to be popular with the ladies, perhaps. But, he did not agree. She knew that Leonhard was not being serious but still he was the 1% dead she did not want to hear it from. Then, Leonhard asked her to forgive him as his foolish jest has hurt her. Then he came closer to Rose said Niklaus von Bülow, the name of the man she was searching for. Then he requested the princess to not get any closer to that man than what was necessary. Then, she said to Klaus that she had never seen it before the Sir Leonhardt's expression when he was serious and thought that if he was suspicious of Niklaus, but why even if Niklaus had connections to a foreign country, but no one knew about it in the game but she felt like events were now deviating from the original game and then Leonhardt asked Klaus if he understood and he agreed. That year, Sir Leonhardt assumed the post of captain but according to the game, it was due to happen years later, and Leonhard thought that if his meddling caused the future to change and maybe it was because he was now the leader, that things that were overlooked in the game are being noticed. He further added and asked Rose to please take Klaus with her wherever she goes outside, and she agreed. 
She thought that because she knew the game's ending, it will be fine if she leave the rest to the Imperial Knights but the bad feeling won't go away then Leonhardt said to Rose if she was troubled over something then he asked her to call for him before she act and promised to be of use to her and she left. Then, Theo came and said to Rose that he believed that she was pouring too much water and asked her to stop. She said thanked him and then Lutz asked if there was something wrong on her mind as indeed. There was something strange about her and she was surprised to see the Lutz. And then Theo said that she seemed depressed the whole day. And when he talked to her, she just replied vacantly and it was not like her at all and she said sorry for that. And then he asked her to not apologize and that was not what he wanted and then Lutz told Rose that if she was troubled over something then she should tell them. Maybe there was something they could do to help and Theo and him were worried that she was feeling low. She was overwhelmed and thanked them and said she was just tired from a lack of sleep and it was so hot and humid last night and then Lutz said that then she should not be in there, where it was hot and asked her to come over there and rest inside. He further added that she could not come into the conservatory anymore and asked her to rest up and then Klaus asked Rose that why she did not indulge herself in their kindness then she replied that she did it and she put the thought that she was thinking about so many things that she could not sleep last night but now she has made them worry. To think that those kind boys, who would become weapons of war so that she could not allow the man who may be a traitor who was Niklaus. From afar, she was able to see him yesterday and he seemed serious but he has a gentle demeanor in appearance and she could see why women would like him. The Bulo family had a long history but it was said that they were deep in debt and on the brink of ruin. And, if that was the case the motive would likely be money but even if the abduction was successful and he acquired immense wealth, it would be too dangerous to stay in the country. Maybe, he has been promised a position in that country as well. He could not allow failure in that state where his life as well as those of the family was at risk and so once Hilda had no use of him and then she stopped and then she stood up and she was going somewhere then Klaus asked her that where she was going and then she replied and said that she was going to Hilda. Klaus replied and said that he could not allow that and she must not expose herself to any danger and she was surprised that if he knew about the danger and thought that Klaus knows that Hilda was in a dangerous position then if Klaus knows, then the Imperial Knights must know and said that then, why don't they protect her and then Klaus replied and said that she was not subject to their protection and from the kingdom's perspective, Hilda was a traitor. They could not risk having her know about their operations. She was afraid as right now she was involving herself with someone's ultimate fate. That decision, that could result in the death of a girl, she could not avoid it. As a princess and as a person, how should she proceed? She asked Klaus. Then, he suggested to return and ask that what was important to her if it was not her but it was them. She thought that Klaus was right as she wanted to protect Lutz and Theo, her precious friends and not a girl that she has never talked to. But then she pushed Klaus, calling her greedy, spoiled and selfish and said that she wanted to help all of them and thought about the words that Leonhardt said to her that he promised to be of use of her. And then Klaus hold Rose and then she said that she was not going to go to her and now asked him to move out and then she saw a woman and thought that if she was Hilda Kremer. She was surprised and asked, why was Hilda there? And then Klaus said to Hilda that beyond that point was a restricted area and ordered her to leave. She replied and said that she did not know something like that and Rose thought that if Hilda was not told anything about the plan, she was simply a disposal. Then she came towards Rose and then Niklaus came and asked to not touch her and brought his sword and then she fell down. Rose was surprised to see Niklaus, and then he asked her if she was unharmed, and then he asked Hilda what in the world she was doing, and then she broke his sword. Niklaus said, as you could see, that woman was one of the bandits, and they were having some issues because they were not making any moves. Rose was surprised and said, what are you saying after you just used and betrayed Hilda? Then he brought his sword and came closer to Rose, and then Klaus tried to protect the princess. And then he replied and said, so as long as that woman will live, she will try to cause his highness harm, and they must get rid of her quickly. And then Rose ordered him to stop, and then Niklaus further said, however, we cannot let her be as she is. And Rose found it not good as no matter what, he was planning to get rid of her there. And then he went close to Hilda with his sword, and then Rose screamed and asked him to stop. And then Leonhardt came and said that he was before her highness and asked Niklaus to control himself. Rose was surprised to see Leonhardt and said that Leonhardt was the only one who heard her cry, and he asked to capture and secure the women and to confiscate all of Niklaus's weapons, and nothing extreme happened. And then Niklaus said to Rose that his deepest apologies were there for endangering her, and they realized that the women were targeting her, so he became impatient, and it led to that incident, and further said that the women may make false testimonies against him for revenge but requested her to believe that at least and further said that he would never do anything to betray her. Then she shouted that after trying to sell off her precious friends for money, 
he was going to get close to her and use her too, and then ask to don't underestimate her, and if he really thinks that a weak excuse like that was going to work on her. And then Niklaus asked to hold it on and asked her to calm down and think rationally and said that the reason that Hilda came there was to get close to her, who could be used as a hostage for Lutz. She may have been directed by Niklaus. On top of that, there was Sir Leonhardt's perfectly time entrance. He must have been monitoring Niklaus. In other words, he was being allowed to run wild in order to bid the warmongers kingdom shirts. Rose inhaled and said if it was so, then Niklaus saved her. And then he asked her to don't falter and keep smiling. And then she thanked Niklaus as she could not ruin everything by venting out all her anger right then. Niklaus replied and said that she was too kind, and she said that if she was of no use at least she could keep smiling. And then he went from there. And then she thought in her mind that she could not face him as she was making such an awful face, and she found it a pathetic look she did not want him to see. And then she said to Klaus that she gives him her sincerest apologies, and then he replied and said to please leave the rest to them. Three days have been passes since the incident. Hilda was now being interrogated at a secure location and it seemed that Niklaus was under monitored house arrest. There was still no evidence of Nicholas' connections with other countries. Hilda's testimony alone was not enough, and she thought that things would have gone more smoothly without her interference. Then someone knocked on the door, that it was him, and asked her if he can come in, and she amazed that he was her brother and wondered what he wants, that late at night, and asked if she shall have some teammate, and he denied he asked her to come there on the sofa. And then she reached and kept her head on the lap of her brother. That was a lap pillow, he asked. He further asked that why don't they have a chat. Rose asked her brother, is it normal for siblings to give lap pillows, or am I the only strange one for getting flustered, while keeping her head on his lap? Then he replied and said, from time to time, allow me to act like an older brother. It's never a word of praise or affection. I haven't even allowed you to open up to me. Something like that. You never go through, she thought. Love can be conveyed through expressions and actions, not just words. She knew very well how much he cared about her, and she felt so warm and so gentle. Then he asked if she was sleepy and told her to go ahead. Tonight, I'll watch over you, he promised. Just then, a voice came, and she immediately got up. Her brother asked her to stop, and she said, something is happening inside the castle grounds. She assumed it could be the Lutz's kidnapping taking place. Her brother held her hand and stopped her, assuring her everything was all right. She was surprised to hear that everything was all right, then she hugged her brother. He reassured her, saying, everything will be all right. Stay here. She thought he knew all the chaos was anticipated. That's why the royal knights wouldn't come to give a report. The only one who didn't know was her, even though she had memories of her past life and knew of future events. She still couldn't do anything. The fact that she was being protected right now was proof of that. Then, her brother said to her, in the end, I still let you cry. I'm a bad brother. She replied, that's not true. You're not the bad brother. The one at fault is the half-baked, powerless me. She decided she wanted to get stronger. In the castle, a fight was going on. Someone said, he went that way. Hurry up and capture him. Theo was there and remarked, he's really going all out. A few hours ago, Lutz and he were kidnapped by bandits who entered the castle. Lutz was able to get his ropes undone, but when he was doing so, the bandits noticed, and now they were fighting. He thought the magic suppressing choker would stop him from casting spews, that punk, Lutz thought. He's got those magic imbued stones. Lutz had snuck in a total of three magic stones, and thus, the third spot signified Lutz's defeat. Lutz said to Theo, we must be in the Wince Kingdom. The only way to get to shirts from Neville is by going through the neighboring country Wince. We're coming close to the horse's stamina limits, but there are no indications of swapping them out. Most likely, some bandits from shirts are going to come and meet up with them. He screamed. You look like a pretty boy who was messed up by a pervert, Theo commented. I'll tell the princess not to talk about your chastity, he added. I'll shove my icicle down your throat first, Lutz retorted. The man who kidnapped them replied, those guys are a real handful, even though they have got no place to go. It was Niklaus, for their own sake, you should try to kiss up to their new owners, he said. Maybe they will take a liking to you and treat you well. Theo agreed, saying, just like a kept dog, you should work hard for your master. Niklaus replied, that's a good attitude. The moment I've been dreaming of is almost at hand. I could finally say goodbye to the poor shaming, boasting nobles and my life of backbiting. Lutz called him a monster, to which Niklaus asked, surprised, what did you say? Lutz replied, you're not human. Niklaus retorted, of all the things, you could say the real monster is you, Lutz Eilenberg. Lutz denied it, saying, you're one too. 
betrayed your homeland, master, family, and friends, feeling no regret. You can't call someone like that human. Niklaus became very angry and attacked Lutz. Don't be stupid. Those pieces of shit could never be your family or friends. They don't understand your excellence, he yelled. Lutz replied, now I see. You're the one with no place to go. Theo, furious, called him an idiot. They arrived at the exchange point. There was a shirt's armor, the king's director corps. Niklaus caught Lutz and told him to get out. Lutz asked him not to touch him, but he threw him to the ground, saying, it's pointless to resist. There's nowhere to run. The both sorcerers were running, and then Niklaus commanded his corps to pick up the pace. And then they saw them and asked them that their master awaits them. And then some people on the horses came and said to do not move as that was their nation's territory and they will not allow them to trespass there. Niklaus was amazed to see that what was going there, and then he thought that. That was the wind's national flag with the horses and thought that the armor the knights of the royal capital. Why was the wind's chivalry? And then, a prince on the horse said to Fritz, who was on the other horse, then, he replied and said that. His sincere apologies were there for involving him in such an affair. Calling him as Prince Johan then Johan replied and said that it was quite all right as the one who forcefully joined was himself Johan. Niklaus was very angry and said that, that can't be happening. When Johan saw the Niklaus, he was amazed if it was not Niklaus and then Fritz asked him if he knew him and then Johan replied and said that he was an imperial knight of his country. And then Johan asked why he was over there. The perfectly timed appearance of the wind's chivalry and Prince Johan, that was not just by chance, that was all according to prior arrangements so that they wouldn't be used by the shirts. Then Lutz realized that the princess was protecting them from being kidnapped and he found it pathetic and said that he can protect himself and yet asked Theo that why did he make the princess do something so dangerous then Johan replied and said that he never asked her to do that. Moreover, that information was of national importance. There was no way they would tell a young princess about it and Johan further said that his little sister was intelligent and resourceful. She probably inferred the crisis on her own and Theo was amazed and thought that the princess deducted it and came to the conclusion herself without any outside information. She was being able to predict all of that by connecting all of the small incidents in the castle together. It was nearly impossible as if she could see the future and then Johan further said that, to make the matter worse, the king now had his eyes on them and Lutz interfered and asked that by the king. If he means the shirts and he denied and said that he was talking about their king and said that, apparently. His little sister has been deemed useful as bait. The enemy's goal was to get the two of them but to get them, they need a hostage. In other words, even in his eyes, there was no better candidate than his sister. Then Theo said that they were going to let the princess get kidnapped and use the rescue mission as a justification to make a large-scale arrest and then Lutz screamed and said that do not screw with her and they were not by her side. Just to get her wrapped up in all of that. Theo asked him to calm down, calling them stupid apprentice. There came a lady. She was magic professor Irene von Altman. She was Rosemary's teacher and Lutz's and Theo's master and she said that if it was not obvious that Prince Christoph would never allow such a thing to happen. Though, he may not look it. The prince thinks that the princess was super cute. He could not leave her alone and then Johan replied and said that Madame Altman and asked if it was her. She replied and said that it was her apologies that she could not help herself. Johan said that he had no intention of getting his little sister further involved in that case, and that is why he needs their cooperation. Leonhardt was planning something by seeing the map and he realized that from their nation of Neville, the only way to Schertz was through the neighboring country of Wintz and the shortest route would be through the mountains. There was no danger of being seen on the mountain trail, but there was also no escape route there. Theo interrupted and said that, so, there was a possibility that they will use another route and she replied and said that that's where these come into play and she used the magic called magic stones and those ones cast fireballs and give them and said that they will guide them and told to just set them off when he resists them sometime during the trip. And then Lutz asked Joan that if he will swear to protect the princess, and he swore that he will. Then, Lutz said that, to protect their most precious person, to go back to the place where she waits for them. They will fight till the end and then Johan saw the color and said that they must be the magic professor's pupils, mentioned in his brother's letter and thought that why are those two being restrained and why are they on the side of the bandits. He asked Niklaus and said that if he have stooped down to betrayal a man of his noble lineage, and then Niklaus was angry and asked him to shut up many times and said how he could possibly understand a weakening brought up cotted and sheltered like him has no right to speak and he twerps with nothing but looks for show 
and getting together and making fun of him and then Sir Fritz was very angry and said that how that the Niklaus speak to his highness like that then Johan interrupted and said that it was all right and he will have that man face judgment in Nebel and it seemed they will not be shot on charges to press. And he said that he was sure Niklaus understood that what it means to throw such insults on him as he was someone who sits second in the line to inherit the Nebel kingdom throne. Then, the both sorcerers were amazed that if he really related to their princess, and Johan further confirmed that twerps with nothing but looks for show was what he said and he confirmed it and further said that for the crime of insulting his sister, he will pay with his life. The never-ending night finally breaks, and Lutz and Theo have yet to return. After Lutz and Theo were kidnapped, brother stayed by the side of princess until daybreak. There was no way that she could sleep, so she kept thinking of the worst-case scenarios. She could not come down without doing something. And then she thought about both of them and said that that greenhouse was much bigger and emptier than she remembered. Klaus was amazed to listen to that, and she said that she must water the plants and she didn't come there to show off how upset she was. She had to get a hold of herself, and Klaus replied and said that he will assist her. She said it was all right, she will not get in his way. Klaus replied and said that she didn't look well and asked her to not push herself too much. Then she thought that in the end, she still caused trouble, and she said that she knew it. Lady Irene arrived that and said that she was there and she really was troublesome, and then she looked at the lady and called her Lady Irene. Irene said that, while she understood how restless she feels, it would be all for naught if she overdid it and made herself sick. Then Rose replied and said that she had to water, and then the lady replied and said that she had already watered the seeds that need daily watering. She said that if she really thinks that she can win an argument against her and further said that the others can be left alone and rather than the plants, she should focus on herself and her health and asked why don't they have some tea in her room, and it will do her good to have some ladies talk eh? Johan said to others that he should better be prepared as his destination was behind bars. Then, Niklaus screamed and asked to do not move and he will kill him. Then Lutz replied and said that he was so loud and as he could not scream into his ear. Lutz brought the ropes and said there was no one less fit to be a hostage than him and asked if he would agree. Niklaus was surprised, and then he asked what did he do. Lutz replied and asked if he cannot guess even then he really was a lost cause, and then he continues the teasing. Niklaus angrily attacked Lutz, calling him a bastard. Then Lutz stopped him and used his magic, and he was amazed to see the magic and found it impossible. The magic suppressing choker was on, and then Niklaus asked how could he use such powerful magic. Then he replied and said that as he could see, it was a fake. Early morning mountains were great, as there was so much water that even one trick could be used in so many different ways. He used magic and asked him how was that, and he was not able to reply as his legs were hurting. Then Lutz replied and said that the range was rather small and the second could be avoided, there was room for improvement. Theo interrupted and said that if he was testing magic during a real fight and asked him to do not get ahead of himself. Then he used his power on Niklaus too. And then Niklaus's people also said that he was one too and asked to stay away. Lutz was amazed to see that, even though they were the ones to capture them. It seemed the tables have turned, he asked Mr. Knight. He was very angry and said that if he was going to insult him and said to not get cocky, calling him a monster. Then Lutz replied and said that calling him a monster was a true insult. And then he thought about a scenario where Rose came there and said to Lutz that he called her name with such a warm smile. Then he replied and said that even a magic user like him, she accepted so openly and because someone like her exists, those power will never trouble him again. Then he thought that he didn't care if he was a monster if those are parts to protect her and further said that if it was what he wanted then they will show him their power to their heart's content, but asked them to know that there was no chance that he will win and now he said to return to their princess. Six years ago, it was a children's home and Theo was of seven years. The first time he saw Lutz, his first thought was, what a thin guy he was, he was completely white and he lagged animation and empathy. That guy, he heard, his parents were hiding him away all his life, and then he saw Lutz sitting under the tree and said hello to Lutz, and then he ignored him. He thought that he was indifferent toward everyone, but for him, he felt relaxed around him. Theo had been slowly realizing that he was different, and he was afraid of everyone finding out and abandoning him, and that fear became reality when his powers went heavier. One day, he saw a monster and thought he was the monster just like him, with the fear and despair, contempt and pity, a look that must have always been directed at him, that he could not forget it even now. In Rose's house, Lady Arena made the tea, and Rose found it delicious. Then Lady said that they said it was tea made with flowers and asked that in the next time, let's grow some with her disciplines. Then Rose replied and said that sounds great and she thinks that they will both like it. Then Lady asked that if she don't have to force herself to smile, 
and she was allowed to cry. Rose replied and said that she will not cry as she won't cry when she thinks about them because when they will come home, those two must be so happy. Then Lady replied and said that they will have the princess be so worried for them. Then she replied and said that that was only natural. Then Lady replied that for them, it was not natural as for magic users. It was difficult to have deep human connections or relationships. They have closed off their hearts after being shunned and feared by their own parents. But they have her now. Even if they run, she kept chasing them. Then Rose replied angrily that she was wrong as she didn't get close to them for their sakes. It was for her own selfish desire. It was to strike down their flags to keep herself safe. And it was a calculated move. And she was just a self-centered person. Then Lady replied and said that all humans are self-centered creatures, and the reason was not important, it was the result. And she thanked her and said that her disciplines were finally laughing like kids their age, and for her, that meant everything. Rose was surprised to hear that. And then Lady Irene replied and said that those who will definitely return to her and asked her to please believe in them and wait for them. She agreed and said that she won't cry yet, as if she do it will be at the sight of them returning home safely. They were in the way to return, and Theo said that he was exhausted after using tons of magic. The thugs and shirt soldiers were taken by the wind's chivalry, and the rest was a political problem. Then Lutz said to Theo that he wanted to hurry up and go home. And then Theo thought about going home and said that they have been together all that time, but that was the first time that he was hearing those words as even the children where they lived in was not a place they could go back to. And then Theo suddenly stopped responding. Then Lutz asked him if he was alright or he was hurt. And then he responded and said that he have been thinking that he have really gotten rounder as if he was really worried about him. And then Lutz replied and said that what he was saying or he was picking a fight then said that it was thanks to the princess. And then Lutz got blushed and said that to not be stupid and Theo said that he have always thought that they had no home until the princess came. At first, he thought, her brother ordered her to get close to them but she was just so stupidly honest and not just to him. She even managed to get the stubborn Lutz to open up. She had filled the void in their hearts and accepted them so naturally. She stayed by their side. There was no more fear of being abandoned in his mind. He wanted to see her. Then they reached the castle and thought she must be there where they always meet. And they opened this door calling her as their precious then she shouts as Lutz and Theo. They also called Princess. She was overwhelmed and said finally and welcomed them back to home and they were so happy that they were back as they finally found the place they can call home. And then Rose replied and said that they were both crying and they replied and said she made them cry. Following the kidnapping case, the Neville and Wint's kingdom declared war on shirts. The surrounding countries placed their support with the Neville and Wint's alliance. It seemed like a continent-wide war was on the horizon. Also, they thought a coup d'etat occurred in Schertz, culminating with the king's assassination. Schertz then declared their surrender. Half a year after the kidnapping case, Rose came and said, it was all right, and asked to begin. Then they asked if she was serious, and she replied and said that of course she was. Her plan of eating ice cream made with Lutz magic. Lutz asked if she was really doing that alone, and said that if she gives them instructions then they will do it for her. Rose replied and said that he was too naive. The most important things in dessert making are precise measurements and dexterity. And she could not imagine such a sloppy person like him getting it right. Then he replied and said that he thought he could do it but she was not convinced at all. She further asked if she could not be here or she was unwanted. And then Theo replied and said that it was absolutely not the case. Then she asked if she could stay and smiled. And then Theo asked Lutz to just give up. She replied to Theo that he was really dexterous. Theo replied and said that he took care of the younger kids at the children's home and he had gotten used to doing stuff like chores. He was baking some cookies too. Rose thought that was why he was a good caretaker and said to Theo that he will make a good husband one day. Then Lutz came and asked angrily what did she mean by husband. Theo started laughing. Lutz asked him to stop laughing. Theo replied and said that he was so desperate and the princess just said it offhand and he was all flushed about it. Then Lutz asked Rose if there was no deeper meaning to what she said. She replied and said that it was not really and then finally he found it good. Then she asked if something was wrong and then Lutz replied and said that it was nothing. He asked, at most importantly, what was next. Then she replied and said that next she wanted to gently heat up that pot and ask Theo to do that. He agreed. Rose thought that the reason they did not want him there was that they didn't want to show her every time they used magic. They had feared as it was no wonder that there was some trauma. Rose replied that he didn't have to if he didn't want, and then he replied and said that it was fine and asked to tell how hot she wanted. She found it beautiful but she could not say anything. Then Theo asked again, too hard, and then she replied and said she was sorry. It was so beautiful that she couldn't help but stare. It was like it has a life of its own and it was so cute. 
Then she thought that if she had hurt his pride as a magic user, Theo replied and said that no one's ever said that before and he was glad that she liked it. Further, he guessed it was pointless to be on guard around the highness. Lutz asked both of them to look at his magic too, but he didn't know if he reacted correctly. But they both laughed so he guessed it was fine. Then her brother came and said, it's been a while. Then she asked her brother if something has happened. He replied and asked if he was not allowed to come and see her casually, and he came to be relaxed by his adorable little sister. She replied that it was okay, but she thought that he looked serious or if he was joking as Leonhardt blinked at her. Then she thought that what should she do? She looked away on reflex and the last time they were together was during the Hilda incident, and they left on awkward terms. And for the thought that how should she be around him? Then he smiled. Then she put that thought that it was good that he didn't seem to mind and thought that if he was the only one who was concerned for her. Leonhardt was such an important person but to him, she was just a little princess. And then her brother asked that nothing more and nothing lacks, what was that? She replied and said that it was a frozen dessert. He replied and said that he has never seen anything like that. She thought unsurprising, seeing as ice cream does not exist in that country. She replied and said that she made it with Lutz and Theo and asked if you won't try some. She said that she will have them bring a fresh one. He replied and said that she used magic for this as he did read the report. She replied and said yes, she thought, it would help them practice with control, and asked if she should not have done so. Her brother replied and said that it was not like that, he just thought it was a very unique idea. And she thought if she was being praised and finally her brother found it good then he asked Leonhardt if he would have some too. He denied and said that he still had his duties to attend to. She thought that he was always faithful to his work and he was so cool, though, she was a bit disappointed. Then her brother replied and said that he must be returning now and thanked her for the food. Rose replied and said that she was glad to see him again and then she thought that Sir Leonhardt was going to leave and then she called him and said never mind and asked to please come again. Then her brother asked if he may borrow Klaus for a moment as he just wanted to talk a bit, and then he asked Klaus what should they do about her highness's guard and said that he wanted him to look after Rose. Klaus was surprised to listen to that. Rose was alone with Sir Leonhardt then. Rose realized that she was so nervous she could not even look at him, but she wanted to apologize for looking away just now. And then he came and said that he must apologize to her. And then Princess asked him to hold it in, and then Leonhardt replied and said that what he did half a year ago, he has always wanted to apologize for it. And then Rose replies and says that the one who should apologize was her. She caused all of them so much trouble by acting without consulting him first, and she was too arrogant, thinking that she could do everything on her own. And then he replied and said that she have done nothing wrong, and if she has done nothing, Hilda Kremer would likely be dead, and the one at fault was him. Even though he knew her highness was in pain, he told her to hold it in. And then she replied that that time, she was able to stay calm because of Sir Leonhardt, and she was grateful for that. But in reality, she had been hurting inside and was unable to accept the situation. And in truth, she was vexed wondering. And then Leonhardt asked her that why won't she rely on him, and she replied and said that. But then she realized perhaps it was not that he won't, but that he can't. And then he asked if there was perhaps as something heavy was burdening her, and if she do not wish to speak of it, he will not pry any further. However, if there was something that she wishes to protect, then she can allow him to assist her. And then she hugged Leonhardt and thought that she was so worried wondering if she was doing the right thing and having no one to consult with, telling herself it was fine and was thinking she had to work alone. But Sir Leonhardt had actually been watching over her, and he has been worrying about her. And she loved him, and she could not help but loved him, but not as the commander of the knights in a game, but as a real person. And then she further thought that she hugged him without thinking, and she was so shameless. And then he just said princess, and she just left hugging him. And then she said that she seemed to have lost her composure calling him Sir Orsine. And then he replied and said that he must apologize and asked if she will not call him Leon any longer. She thought that now she have done it as she used the nickname and that was it and thought that she could not beweasel herself out of that one and asked him that if he will allow her to continue calling him as such. And he replied that of course she can call. And then she thanked him and thought that now she could call him Sir Leon now. And then she asked him that if he will please listen to her story calling him Sir Leon. And then she further said that she had a dream when she was young and like any ordinary dream. It was sad in their world but the people around her were a bit different. They seemed to her to be a bit older. Leonhardt found it a prophetic dream, and then she thought that it was not a prophetic dream but memories of her past life. And to say that the world was artificially created would not be right, and even if that was the same world as from the game. The people around her were not just 1s and 0s, and there was no saving or loading and no readers right now. 
All of that was reality. And then he replied and said that he understood that Her Highness learned of the future and to prevent the misfortunes of those around her, she was acting on her own. And then she was amazed and asked if he was going to believe her. And he agreed and said that he could not bring himself to believe that she would tell a pointless lie. And she thanked him and thought that she was sorry as she was still lying but that was the truth she will never reveal. Then Leonhardt further asked her that if there were any more events in the near future to be aware of and the events must be avoided. Then she replied and said that the event won't happen for a while still but there was something they could do to prepare. And then he replied and said if that was so, then he requested her to allow him to assist her. And then she replied and said that if Sir Leonhardt was with her then they might be able to prevent it and thought that the flag she must break no matter what. The revival of the main villain and the possible capture target, the demon Lord Mikhail. A thousand years ago, the world was on the brink of extinction because of the demon lord. Destruction was one-sided, and every day was hell. Humans had no choice but to live in constant fear. But one day, the demon lord was sealed away, and the world became peaceful once again. After a long period of peace, the story of the demon lord became mere fairy tale. But the demon lord was not actually gone. Within a temple in the Neville Kingdom, he sleeps quietly for now. Then, Theo asked her if she placed it there. Her, then, won't lose as they were playing chess inside. Further, he asked for her apologies as she was spacing out, and usually, he was the one losing. If he was going to win, he would like for it to be a fair fight. Rose then took the king, and asked how about that after playing a chance. He screamed that he would never win and then said that if she said she learned chess, so she could learn about battle tactics. She asked if any of this actually helps. He replied and said that who knows, as he was a beginner in both. So, he wouldn't know, but he supposed and said that it was really complex, and so it was a good practice. He said that even that little pawn can change the sway of the battle. Everything was depending on just one person. She replied and said that if they too had been taken by the shirts, then the situation would have been different. If the kidnapping had been successful, she wondered what would have happened as shirts would have attacked winds and the war would have broken out. Hey guys don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We love reading your comments, so please leave your thoughts and suggestion below, and wish you a happy new year to all of you.